Yo, what is up guys? Joker here bringing you another video, this time going over gear progression in Throne in Liberty. A Throne in Liberty has been out for about a week and I have 67 hours in the game. I currently have a gear score of 2000, well I guess a combat power of 2234 with the majority of my items being at max enchantment and being all my gear being at least rare the reason why i wanted to go ahead and make this video is because of the fact that it wasn't really like directly intuitive on how you would upgrade your gear uh, and it had me stuck at uncommon gear for the longest time so now that i figured out how to effectively progress the tier of your gear i figured i'd put that information out there uh, let's quickly go over how gear works in the tiers of gear there are four tiers of items in throne and liberty there is gray common items there's green uncommon items there's blue rare items and then there is purple epic items as you advance through the tiers you're going to unlock the ability of having gear that has traits as well as the ability to enchant an item the common items have neither of these these are the starting item sets these are the first items that you're going to be finding and the items that can be bought in most towns from the equipment merchant this is mainly for your base set right you deciding on what type of gear you think you're going to want to wear and the type of weapons you're thinking you're going to want to use moving up from that you're going to be receiving um these quality lithographs throughout the normal campaign and these allow you to craft items green items are going to be the first your first interaction with traits as well as the ability of enchanting your item green items can be enchanted up until level six and they can have up to two traits on them how you get a trait on an item is you have to have an identical item and slam it onto another item so as an example with this hat i have right here how i got the 120 magic endurance is i had to go and farm elusive hex weave hats until i got two copies that had the magic endurance and i essentially just did the same thing with the melee evasion and the max health as well is i farmed until i got one that had a melee evasion and i farmed until i got one that had max hp then i went to my equipment enchanting i went to traits and once you have an additional copy this will be locked you can just click it and it costs about 15k to unlock it that's how you get multiple traits on an item and with the progression from normal to green like i said you're going to get the ability of the equipment enhance and the traits but you're not going to want to start up there and you're not really going to want to farm out traits for green gear green gear is very mediocre and the main purpose of you even gathering it is going to be throwing it into your lithograph book this is where you're going to get your main progression to rare items this is where i took the time to go ahead and take a look through and kind of complete the slots for the items that i wanted it's how i got my rings i believe um i believe i got my cloak from there i got my amulet i got my bracelet and i got my belt all from my lithograph book the alternative is farming them in the dimensional circles or in the um well, I guess it's all called Dimensional Circle. I thought they were called something different, but these low-level co-op dungeons or the higher-level co-op dungeons. As you can see, you can get the gear here as well. However, it is a little bit of a pain in the ass because, one, parties usually suck ass, like 
you may have to actually try quite hard to find a party if you are not a tank or a healer. Uh, I've sat in queue for over 40 minutes trying to find co-op dungeon parties sometimes in the public party matchmaking. So you're better off just going to the party board and seeing if you can find anyone there. But going from uncommon items to rare items, you are going to unlock a third trait slot as well as your first um, your first reference of transferring over your equipment and chant, right? So you can move up the equipment and chant and level up by one tier. So what I mean by that is you can go from an uncommon item to a rare item and transfer over the equipment level and it will be dropped by three. So let me go ahead and use these boots as an example where you see that it goes to plus three. If I do this transfer, it is going to consume my uncommon boots and transfer that power onto my rare set, but it loses three levels. This same thing happens when you're moving gear from blue to purple. So from rare to epic, you will go from a max enchantment level of nine to an enchantment level of six, just because the higher quality items and the higher uh, level, uh, I'm sorry, higher tier items do take more experience in that higher quality currency to level up. With that out of the way, how do you go about upgrading your gear? Well, the way that I've found is the easiest and most efficient is taking advantage of the lithograph book. In case you're unaware, the lithograph book is essentially a book of blueprints, right? If you find an item, you can put one copy of that item into the lithograph book, and there's a bunch of different sets that you can fill out going from common items Items to epic items with varying rewards. And the best part about this is it is relatively easy to fulfill a large amount of these sets. So starting us off, what you want to do is you want to run to the equipment merchant and any city. You're going to buy multiple sets of each of these items because for the lithograph book itself, it does take multiple sets of the items to fill each collection. So you know, just buy, I think it's only like two or three sets that you actually have to buy. Um, and then you're going to end up filling up everything in the gray lithos uh, that you really need. You're going to want to try to prioritize things that give you a lithograph or give you quality polished crystals because these two items are going to be a necessity and going to be what bottlenecks you the most. So you're gonna go ahead and just fill out as much as you can with what you find from the equipment merchant. And then you're gonna be taking advantage in the open world peace events. The reason why is because these are really low level mobs that you probably skipped over and and they drop not only a lot of normal gray common items, but a lot of the upgrade materials as well, as well as the events themselves are relatively rewarding because they give you food baskets, which give you 15 uh, minute food items to help just boost your stats, right? So you're going to do that. You're going to do the equipment merchant, and then you're going to do the open world peace events. At that point, you should have enough quality polished stones and lithographs that you can go to any town that has an item crafter. There is three that I am aware of. There is Venata Village. There is the Stone Guard Citadel. And there is a Castleton. All three of these places have item crafters. They have their own little unique icons. It's pretty much the same icons that you see in other towns, but they're usually a different color. You're going to come over to whatever crafter and you're going to make a set of items. This is where you're going to want to pay a little bit of attention, right? This is how you're going to be getting your rare items because in the lithograph book, the 
sets that you complete do have a correlation to the reward a lot of the times, right? So like, let's say you're running dagger, great sword, you're going to want to focus on making these four daggers, and then you would get the rare dagger. And then you would just look for wherever the great sword is, you're going to build these four great swords. And then boom, there you go, you have your rare weapon set. From that point on, it does get significantly harder because from that point on, how you're mainly going to get your magic items is going to be probably in the ant's nest or in... Um, you're going to be getting them from ant's nest is really good. It's where I farmed a lot. Let me open the right menu. Uh, you can do dimensional circles. Um, you can do these lower level dimensional circles, but mainly you're still going to be getting it from the lithograph book. You're just going to want to cascade the rewards as effectively as you can. What I mean by that is you're going to want to go ahead and take a look and see, okay, well, I want this epic item. So where do I get these three other items? As you can see, you can farm some of them extremely uncommonly probably, but, and that's how you effectively do it. That's how I went ahead and I got all of my gear, except for my hat. I farmed my hat from Ant's Nest, right? And as the progression on your server continues, the milestone is going to be opening up more and more events. So it should be easier for you to go ahead and get gear easier and easier. But that's essentially what I did is I bought everything from the vendor. Then I did world events until I crafted enough green items to fill out my lithograph book. That way I would be accepted in parties in the level 50 co-op dungeons because you really want to do the party board and you have to have like a decent uh, gear score to actually get into a party that will clear the boss. Otherwise, you're sitting in party matchmaking and if you're not a tank or a healer, it's going to take you forever. As well as the party matchmaking, usually the players are worse and there is a high chance that they are trolls. So there's a large chance that you won't even clear the dungeon. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Relatively short video, I hope, going over how I upgraded my gear and how you can too. But that's it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with this and future content. And until next time, take care.